Dear colleagues, today I should have been in New York to take part at the C40 Women for Climates conference. I'm really sorry, but due to bad weather condition, our flight was cancelled. Anyway, Rome wants to be with you and give its contribution to this important day. I wish to thank you, because events such as these provide us with an opportunity to debate matters and strengthen awareness that our generation play an active role in safeguarding our planet. We are here to state that mistaken and short-sighted policies, which have little in common with an ability to act for the common good, must no longer be tolerated. We are here, above all, to say that it is possible to plan an economic and social development model that involves everyone at all latitudes and all continents. More and more women are leading cities, something that was unthinkable only a few decades ago. This means that change is already underway. It is, however, change that must be correctly used. I mistrust those who preach that superiority of one gender over another, whatever the gender may be. And I firmly believe that the contribution that each individual with his or her own vision can provide to the well-being of the community. As a woman, I believe that we, administrator, present here today are called upon to make a contribution with our vision, so attentive to resilience and capability to ensure long periods of peace and serenity by relying on cooperative work, wise management and tenacity. Our generation need to dream on a better future, to escape the pessimism that part of our culture has been imbued for years. To achieve this, we have technology and science at our service. Never before, as in this historical period, as humankind has so many instruments available for improving lives. And we must do this avoiding all forms of selfishness. Selfishness also regarding the future generation that expect us to provide the foundation upon which they will build their own society. May this foundation be solid and strong. That is what we are trying to achieve in Rome. Among the many objectives, we have set ourselves a real environmental revolution in Italy's capital. We have decided to list the plan for sustainable energy and the climate as one of the first points on the political agenda, hence the PAESC plan. We are developing plans to improve sustainable mobility and energy efficiency, reforestation and waste management, which we want to call post-consumer waste, so as to change the cultural paradigm, to ensure a sustainable future for our cities and create job opportunities for the younger generation. Environmentalism must not become a hobby for rich, but an opportunity for growth. This is a message we must spread to the suburbs of our planet, to the creation of which we ourselves sadly often contribute. The role played by cities is fundamental and indispensable. As women who manage, we are greatly committed to choosing the most sustainable paths for governing the future. Women are used to managing their homes, their family, and they are aware that everything has a value. For this very reason, we will create reutilization centers, recycling factory, urban vegetable gardens and food forestry in cities. Nation will only win this challenge if cities achieve this reduction objective and Rome wish to be committed to this. We need to review and redesign our cities, starting with mobility, waste reduction, even more than differentiation, also reviewing how objects are designed, starting with raw materials and packaging. Nowadays, scientific research presents us with innovative materials that are also come from renewable sources. We cannot continue to rely on fossil sources. Women mayors, but also many of our male colleagues, are the first to be committed to encouraging a change in the public opinion. Without a strong framework of supranational governance, the policies of national governments are continuously tempted to postpone such all but necessary choices in order to satisfy the economic and social interest of development. In Rome, we have decided to make those choices now and are immediately drafting the PAESC, the Plan for the Sustainable Management of Post-Consumer Waste, the Plan of for Green Cities, and one for the Sustainable Mobility. The June 1992 Rio de Janeiro Convention clearly set out a number of principles. They include the protection of future generation, equity, shared responsibilities, prevention, precaution, the priority duties and initiative 
of developed country. Particular consideration for the needs of socio-economic development in developing countries and the need for support from industrialized country. This is a very important international framework instrument, open to integration in the form of protocols uh, or other similar agreement having legal standing. The Paris Agreement was recently signed and consists in an introduction and 29 articles. It was signed by all United Nations member states and 194 countries plus the European Union. This is certainly of political and juridical importance because it emphasizes its universal nature and is the voice of the international community as a whole. The agreement's implementation is planned for 2020, but although it has been approved, the preliminary documents allows its early implementation by governments wishing to apply it. At the moment, the Paris Agreement has yet to be fully implemented with reference to the French government's excellent intention and efforts. Pope Francis, who has often referred to environmental issue also in his encyclical entitled Laudato Si, say that the efforts to bring world leaders together at COP21 in the search for new ways to confront climate change and to protect the Earth, our common home. This is also an effort needed to achieve the objective of sustainable development at Addis Ababa and the 2030 UN agenda. At an ethical and religious level, this is fully embraceable. But unfortunately, one must accept in the juridical and political reality of the governments. One can speak of a partial result achieved, but we still have a long way to go. It is necessary to be realistic. Nowadays, climate is changing in a roaring, accelerated manner that can also be observed by ordinary people. At a scientific level, there is an evidence of the certain effects of human activities in various forms, primary due to the emission of greenhouse grasses, not only. The question that remains implied is that climate change as a whole affect the biosphere in all its elements, including the human one. It is not a coincidence that civil society is demanding greater participation and information. People have to be protected and to cooperate because the climate's destiny is linked to their own lives.